Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, or like a book club for people who hate reading. This month we're doing underrated films, so I picked the movie made in 1985 called Enemy Mind. We do Star Trek The Next Generation, Season 5, Episode 2, and we bring you movie news. This week we have John the Charney and James Hello. Stevens, the gruesome twosome. So I said in the opening we're doing the movie Enemy Mind with... Dennis Quaid and Lewis Gossip Jr. from Iron Eagle fame. And here's the description of the movie. Iron Eagle fame. A soldier from Earth crash lands on an alien world after sustaining battle damage. Eventually he encounters another survivor, but from the enemy species he was fighting, and they band together to survive. And the first thing I want to say about this movie, and I totally think it's true, it's like Robinson Crusoe mixed with the odd couple. You know, I actually was kind of thinking of it's like the it's like the Star Trek episode you picked. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't really do you that know? on purpose, Did but you it, you're right. About that? You're... I mean, it was kind of interesting that you picked that one episode to go with this film. I, I would love to say that I did that on purpose, but it was completely by accident. But, but I'll that's take what it, it remind me of. I'll, I'll totally take credit. You sure could. I wish it was as good as that episode. Um, I gotta say, the one thing I actually agree, there was a rumor, a rumor uh, not a rumor, the reviewer, the most movie came out in the 80s that I actually thought was spot on on this, said it was this year's Dune. And, and pretty much what they're saying is, Dune the movie, amazing sets. And this had, for the 80s, an amazing set. The visual effects were amazing. Yeah, for the 80s, so definitely. Um, but How much did you say the budget was? $40 the, million? the budget total was $40 million. What they had is they actually had another director... <laughs> And I think they spent like, uh, I, I think it was around $17 million, but I could be off. They spent a lot of money on a, doing a, a lot of initial filming. And they, they brought on the Wolfgang, who, did the, the, who was the director, the final lies director, and he scrapped all the footage. Uh, oh, wait, you mean the guy that did Das Boot? Yeah, was that he the director that did Das Boot? Yep. I didn't know that. Um, so, you know, this film's kind of like on a hit list now. You, at least there's no alien Nazis. Um, <laughs> Die. So I the, the I love I I kind of describe this movie in in two halves for an hour and forty eight minute movie it's a little bit hard to do but there's two halves in this movie and I like everything up to the point where the the asexual alien kind of gets pregnant um but I I loved everything up to that I even love the blade Dennis Quaid winked at him oh, I even love the and all. oh jeez. <laughs> Did you say the brown eye? No, I said <laughs> one eye. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> hearing issues. Um, oh my goodness! I even love the br uh, Blade Runner esque narration. Um, and you, you could, know, you know, it wasn't as it wasn't annoying actually. It was very few and far between that they actually had narration. I think there was only really a handful of times that Dennis Quaid, you know, kind of did the narration, honestly. And I thought, uh, I loved I loved how they did in the beginning, basically. Yeah, there was a lot more in the beginning. It was longer, I would say. And I would say that was basically just to give you kind of a, a quick, here's what happened, boom, then story. Because when it first started, it, it, it literally dropped you in the middle of a space battle. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's kind of one of those moments you weren't exactly sure what the hell was going on. They're just fighting these guys, and Dennis Quaid, over his narration, kind of gives you a little bit of the history and why, and but not really enough, to be honest. There wasn't enough backstory as to exactly what was going on. Oh, no, not at all. Strife, and why they really hated these guys the way that they did. and So it's kind of a little bit of, like, overview. So we're in the fight with these guys that are the, the Drak, right? Drak? Drac, yeah. Drac. The, the the thing I yeah. thought was weird about it, and we uh, is they were telling how the humans kind of started this war. Yeah. There's not a lot of movies that I can remember where it's obviously the humans saying you can't have that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you, do you know any movies that it basically says the human starts it? In all the Star Trek, it's not our fault. Star Wars, it's the Sith's fault. Are we going with like fiction stuff? Yeah. Anything like this, that's like the science fiction, even Fahrenheit 9/11. How? Michael Moore, it's fiction. Oh. He says it's our fault. Right? Oh, wow. You're, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that's. Did you, did you that's, not catch that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, no, I didn't. I thought you said Fahrenheit. Not, not, and then what's the other one? Yeah. Uh, inconvenient Truth? Okay, okay. Okay, I'll get, I'll get off that. Um, but I, 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 I do well, wish. <laughs> For mine, I have more comments I, on that. I, I do wish they borrowed, like, I don't know, the space. Wait, wait, I don't think 
if there's really any. This is the first one that... Uh, Battlestar Galactica. I well, think we started that fight with the, with the well, Cylons, in, in, isn't it? On the new series, I think it's our fault. I, I, if I remember correctly. I don't remember if... Yeah, on, the original, the first... on, on, on the original one, it's not. Okay. Because I don't, I, I could be wrong. I mean, I've actually seen the whole series of the original. I've seen I bits and pieces all of the, the new original. one. I've only watched bits and pieces of that one, so I'm um, backwards on that, I guess. Um, but yeah, see, that's the first one. I don't know. The only thing I wish they did is I wish they borrowed like the space planes from Battlestar. Yeah, the the, the things that they had in this thing were kind of. I, I don't think they would actually move in space, honestly. I, maybe. I mean, they do. <laughs> I don't. I really don't think that they would move in space very well i mean not not to the they do look like not to the hairpin maneuvers that they were doing in the beginning of the film and they look like uh some of the like the space planes that they used or spaceships or whatever you want to call it they look like star uh star, <laughs> star wars rejects for like spaceships it's like yeah, oh how about this for the, the 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 for this plane um no give it to Lewis gossip jr um <laughs> And I actually like Lewis Gossip Jr. I actually think he did the best acting in this he did, movie. He did pretty good. I mean, I mean his facial expressions were amazing. And uh, the thing I did, I, I actually was reading about this movie. He did all the vocalizations. Oh, cool. None of that was actually done third party. And how much of that on his face was prosthetic? Because that was actually pretty impressive. Some of that had to be like there's that thing on the side of his head that was going up and down. That yeah, was and then he, did you see the things on the side of his mouth that were moving when he breathed? I was wondering how he was hitting that just right. And I'm thinking that could have been they had enough room where they could have put something in there, but that was little things in this movie that I actually really appreciated. This because in the 80s they they not a lot of time they would have done. The, excuse me, there wasn't a lot of time they would have added little extras like that. Yeah, especially considering this is all practical effects, most of it. Yeah, the, you know, the one that really bothered me was, as you said, the asexual um, um, alien. alien, and when the, uh, oh gosh, what was the kid's name? Zumi. Zumi, yeah, um, was, actually came out, do you remember Dogma? Yeah. He looked like the shit demon. <laughs> I, I mean, that was my only thought when he pulled it out, I'm like, oh, 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 I actually don't remember that scene. I'm going to have to pay attention. And I mean, like when he pulled it out, that's exactly what it looked like. And there is, oh my God. And there are some actual famous people, especially for 80s. You've got Dennis Quaid. Uh, Louis Gossip Jr., mileage may vary about how popular he was in the 80s. Um, now, he, I don't think I he's... I thought he was pretty popular in the 80s. I mean, for... Um... Some of the actors, I think he was one of the more standout actors of the 80s. Okay. Because they know in, in the 90s, he still does a lot of stuff. But now, I, I think mileage may vary whether he's popular or not. I mean, he's definitely still doing stuff. You had Byron James, who uh, was actually in... Oh, excuse me. Um, I, we just did it. <laughs> Remember what it was called? <laughs> Blade Runner? <laughs> oh, yeah. He does. Um... <laughs> It looks, uh, it looks, well, he was, uh, Brian, excuse me, Brian, Byron, Byron James was just in the movie we did, Blade Runner. Oh, yes, he was, I see. So, okay. we're, um, so that's far as it goes, as far as really famous actors. So, even then, I think this was kind of, at least what I remember, kind of a bunch of no-names. Yeah, it really was kind of no-name, but, I mean, with the, with 90% of the movie being between uh, Dennis people. Quaid and, and Louis Gossett Jr., I mean, you don't really need any more characters in that. I mean, I was a little bit bummed that they kind of did a little bit of Jeremiah Johnson style with Dennis Quaid's character. Why didn't you let him grow his own facial hair? Anyways, um, but, you know, it was one of those that that's what it kind of reminded me of, survival of the thing. But one but of the that's... major things about this film that kind of bothered me was he says, you know, that he got picked up by a surveillance team when he got shot by the guy left out in the middle of, of the area. So this surveillance team has been checking this moon kind of regularly, and how did they miss you? Yeah. Because, I mean, even they, they could, you know, uh, reason it away that they, um, the, the slavers weren't there mining the area. No, the slaver ship was there already, blown up. Yeah, because, they, but they were also, see, he said earlier when, he, saying, found, when he found the surveyor, like the surveyor markers, he was saying it was from the scavengers looking for raw minerals. Yeah. 
you know, so yeah, totally. Like, how do they miss him? Unless the only thing I could think of is, you know, it's like the best place to hide is right in front of your face. True. Maybe they were just staying away from the meteor shower side. Yeah, and a lot of the time they they were either in that weird looking shelter or in in the cave. The problem is, how do they miss the guy that was walking around the whole time? Exactly. And I mean, that was one of the things that is kind of like a big plot hole for me. Um, I didn't really think. I know I, that part honestly wasn't the most. To me, it wasn't the most negative part of it. Like, it's obviously a giant plot hole. It's probably the biggest plot hole in the 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 whole movie. Yeah. Because honestly, there's not a lot of plot in this movie. Yeah. Um, now uh, there really wasn't any twists and turns for this movie. It kind of telegraphed everything that's going to happen. I mean, even he's saying in the beginning, you know, oh, these uh, slavers don't like the Drax. They will come and do this, and you're like, okay, well, that's going to come out to play later. Um, the estrogen thing really hit that alien pretty hard, obviously. I mean, and you knew that that alien was going to die, you know. And then, well, you know, you he was going to become open. Daddy Quaid, you know. I mean, you knew that was going to happen. I mean, way to go, um, Mr. Mom. And then the other thing, like, when they first get on that on the the planet, because it's a secondary planet, right? It was one of the planets. Yeah, it was a second or it third planet. It wasn't a moon, it was a planet. No, yeah. Anyway, um... And you have the tentacle monster thing there, and it's like, okay, well, that's going to come back again. And what so, was up with the tentacle in the middle of the night? I mean, was that a scene from Super? <laughs> oh, I was actually thinking that was a Sarlax cousin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only thing I could think of, because it was kind of... That was a really weird plot device. I mean, because the only time he showed... The only the two times that char- that the thing actually showed up involving Rudd, Dennis Qu- Quaid and Lewis Gossip Jr. was the first one, the show that Lewis Gossip Jr.'s character kind of cared enough to rescue him. Yeah. And and the second one was, you know, vice versa. So it was just a plot device to show, yeah, these two people care about each other enough to rescue them when something happens, like they don't think about it. It's yeah. just a really weird way to do it. Yeah, I, you know, I also got to say in the in the scene where he's laying in, about to be ejected out <clears> in <throat> space, you know, that thing. And the guy tries to steal the necklace. I mean, they made that necklace a little stronger than most of the other necklaces that I've ever seen in movies. It's like, give, give me this thing. Yeah, you know? usually and they just give just a... Like, I've always been like, that is a cheap necklace. Yeah, those and that alien metal was amazing, man. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was another thing that kind of bothered me is that in a, they do it a lot in sci-fi films and TV shows where the aliens have a more peaceful religion than we do and and but his religion still seemed like islam to me i mean in the way that he was was praying and you know what i mean and yeah, constantly studying it and a, a little like bit that. um I, a bit. I didn't really I, I wasn't really digging in that far i was actually think it was kind of cool that they they, they they randomly gave him some sort of language even invented some sort of writing i thought yeah. was cool um far as going deeper into it i i wasn't really wasn't really focusing and I'm not, even though I guess you should have, considering it was a main point of the character. Was, yeah, I mean, he you know, at the end, he gets to become an honorary uh, uh, Tomod or whatever they were trying to call the, the thing. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess so. I mean, I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I agree. Um, you know, the, the I had another point. You know, the lakes in this one. I mean, how much antifreeze did they go through? Oh, by the way, apparently that was a film at the same, the same, uh, like, pool that they filmed some of the model sets for Das Boat. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, recycle, right? That's a big thing in Hollywood. Recycle. Good job. Yeah, um... So, uh, the, you know, um, one of the things that kind of throws a, another wrench into the, the time frame of it is the, the, um... The thing that you really can't judge time on that planet the same way. So I was always trying to figure out, like, how long he was there. And it looked like he actually went through a full season, so a full year. Because, I mean, they start out uh, without any snow and the meteor showers, and then it turns into snow, not so many meteor showers, things like that. I was kind of wondering, like, and then he threw in the fact that um, the little estrogen baby grows fast. So you don't, I mean, it looks like he's, what, five, six when he yeah. gets captured type thing. So you're not sure if that's, you know, three years, two years. I mean, he you really a... can't judge it, but it's got to be at least a year I mean, that that kid was alive. So he's yeah. been two years on this planet. I thought they said three. 
was it three? I couldn't remember if it was two or yeah, three. I mean, because the, the little salamander did grow really fast. Yeah. Or was it more like a bearded no, dragon? It's a shit demon. I'll say uh, bearded dragon. <laughs> anyway. But, you know. Because um, we get enough crap about shit you say. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not like I'm ever going to stop. Point. So, um, yeah, so that's that's something that kind of bothered me about the movie. I don't, I didn't hear a, a time frame. Did you actually say one? Uh, there was uh, the only point they said something was how he was gone like three years. Is the point when yeah, he I was back them, on the space I heard station? Them say something on the space station. They, they gave but... it that. Besides that, no, there really wasn't like any sort of recording of time. Like Jeremiah Johnson, they do it by change of seasons. Yeah. This one, the only reason why I think they did change of seasons was because it looked the same throughout. So they needed to th change it up a little bit for plot devices. Okay. Like the reason why he was all like the, the big Drax, I don't remember his name, was actually, you know, covered Jerry. up. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's not really his name, but that's what Quaid called him. You know, that's the only thing I could think of because they didn't really, right, they didn't really give any time yeah. frame. And, and apparently, uh, was it, one, like three seasons, like, was it one seasons? It's three years, three years. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, that was something that I was trying, I kept on trying to figure out and trying to figure out how I could do a marker through the movie to see, you know. Hey, there was really of, nothing. Yeah. Um, unless you want to uh, account for, like, Dennis Quaid's beard. Yeah, I mean, I could throw that something, like, four months. <laughs> yeah, so that's the only thing I could think of where they would say that, or they would show that. Yeah. Um So I give this movie... um you know, I give it a three to five when I saw it when I was a kid. I, I like it, liked it. I still like it. Um, it's missing a lot. I actually think they could have, they could have excluded kind of having a kid to really focus more on these two enemies, which yeah. I think it would have been a better story. I mean, it's an old story. I mean, it's been around forever. It just is a sci-fi twist. Yeah. But, um, overall, three to five. The acting wasn't all that great. Um, Lewis Gossip Jr. was the best actor in this movie just because he had to be an alien. Yeah. Um, Dennis Quaid, I think, kind of phoned at home a little bit. Yeah, there are quite a few scenes that he did that in. Um, the Mickey Mouse thing was hilarious. Yeah, that was hilarious, but it's not true. You people. insulted Mickey Mouse. It's not true. Um, what do you give it? You know, um, I, I was going to give it a rating, but then I come to find out that this guy, it's the DOS boot director, so that's an automatic point five <gasps> removal Ooh. for me, so it's a 1.5. I'm serious. I, I mean, that took a whole point off that this is the that director. From I DOS boot. Yeah, I um, mean, I can't, I can't give you any grace. But let me tell you this. Ooh. that was That's a lot less of a deduction than I would give Scorsese or M. Night Shalali, Pop, Ding Dong, whatever. I just, why don't we just call him now? He Who Must Not Be Nate? It's, it's just faster to say. I just like making fun of his name. <laughs> um, so, um, did you want to move over to the TV show? Yes, we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna switch okay. over the, the TV show. I picked, uh, Dar, it's called, Dar, the episode's called Darmok on uh, Season 5, Episode 2 of Star yeah. Trek, The Next Generation. STNG for idiots. Um... <laughs> One of the reasons I, I like this is because this is, to me, one of the more standout episodes being they, uh, the alien creatures didn't speak English or uh, no, even sort of no. non-sort of language. They did speak a language. The thing, it was, it was the an thing about it was all the uh, uh, language that they used were uh, references to their history and their past. Yes. So you had to actually have a basis of where it is. So, so they yeah. were using uh, metaphors and analogies yeah, it was, it was to non say something. It was a non-traditional language. Yeah, I thought it was actually kind of a cool idea of something. Yeah, well, yeah. that was one of the reasons I picked it, because this is one of the ones as a kid that it just stood out to me as, whoa. Darmok and Jod. And my, my favorite part on this, this whole this whole episode, was the part when, by the way, spoiler, but if you're watching the show, you should know that by now, um, is the the scene where the alien is injured and Picard is, is telling him the story. Mm, yeah. That whole part around the fire. Uh, 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 Midian. Yeah. Right? Something like that. Anyway. That whole part was my favorite. Always been. As a matter of fact, generally, if I watch an episode, I just fast-forwarded that part. Um. I loved that part of that movie because it, it shows it shows that a two people who are warring, just like in the in the in Enemy Mind, there's some commonality. Yeah. And Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossip Jr. It was their survival meant they had to work together. And in this one, it was more of a deeper understanding. Yeah. Matter of fact, I wish this I wish the, the movie had been more like this episode. God, it was a mouthful for you. Yes. Um 
So what do you think, James? You know, I always did like this episode of Star Trek. This wasn't um, my favorite, you know, but it was in like the top five of one of those. Like you said, it stood out a lot to me. And um, the reason being is because the situation that they put themselves in, that I wouldn't say that Picard put himself in, but, you know, that they placed them in was so unique. And the way that they were using a, a stressful situation to to uh, basically do peace talks between each other and try to understand each other through uh, a common goal, which yeah. was to survive and defeat this enemy. Mortal and I Kombat. thought that was a really good way to do it. And um, yeah, I thought it was really well done in that fa in that fact. Um, but, you know, at the end of the thing, you know, I always wondered this one thing about Picard. Where the hell did he get all those real books? I mean, what did he do to get books hardcover books in a society that uses no currency he made them what did he have to do for them he, he told the computer make me a book <laughs> yeah but, but i've never seen anybody do that you know and ricardo was one of the few guys that always had books on hand data made instruments mm, that's a good point um but data was a robot i think there's you know, the only this is a, a little bit of a sidebar because yeah, i think it was. i think but well one I, of I, those things is that i noticed in this one i'm like i would say because it, it does fit with the thing because it was at the end and he's reading up on their own history and story to understand i would think Picard because Picard is more of a, a classical character um as far as he appreciates things more more i mean without getting too deep into it i just think he just cares more yeah about stuff like that yeah and i mean i i, I think by far uh, in that situation of trying to communicate to one another um you see how good of an actor picard is because he does basically the whole dennis wade thing in what less than an hour oh yeah but and i actually i really do think enemy mind which was more like this episode yeah but I don't know. I give or take. Um, just to let you know, we do have a Facebook page. You love us, hate us. Let us know if you write us hate mail. We, we, we will read you on air. You just have to be a little bit more creative about it, please. Yeah, YouTube critics. And the other thing is, we now have a podcast. You can catch us on Podbean, Stitcher, iTunes, and more. So we're gonna switch to movie news a little bit, and I'm actually really sad to say this. Legendary actor Mickey Rooney dies at 93 years old. By the way, that's a very good long life. He was 93 years old. Yeah. Um, that I, I, I think that sucks. I wasn't a big fan of his, but a fan enough to actually be kind of bummed of the fact the guy had passed on. He was a on. plastic guy. You know? he, was a, he had skills. Yeah. So, yeah, that is kind of a, a bummer news. <clears throat> um, and um, the other news that I'm actually surprised they're doing, considering in the 90s, especially late 90s, this particular character was banned from television. Speedy, was it Speedy Gonzalez? Idiots. 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 Speedy, the Looney Tunes character, is going to get his own movie, which surprises the living crap out of me. I wouldn't be surprised if the PC crowd um, protests, does something, or they completely change the character. You know, you can I, change I've a, known, a very one-dimensional cartoon. I've known a lot of Mexicans from Mexico um, and most of them that I know, they love Speedy Gonzales. They were the ones always saying it to me, like, you know, on the lay, on the lay, whatever. It's like, whoa, wait, hey. all right, cool, awesome, you know, Speedy, <laughs> you know. So it was one of those. It's like I don't know. I've never met a single Spanish or Mexican descent person who was offended by him. I no, I'm it never with you. Made sense. Anyway, so I'm happy they're doing it, and I hope they follow through with it, and I hope they say yeah to the critics. And I just, I'll be honest, I, I, I agree with James, and I hope it sticks close to the original character I'm tired of adding yeah. on to, because it just, it's stupid, honestly. Um, I just hope they don't, like, do, like, an origin story. <laughs> oh. Right? Oh, too many, right? jo too many jokes and not enough time. And to, I guess, to sandwich uh, a good news by bad news... Another death death was character actor Jeffrey Lewis packed, uh, passed away. You know him because he was in films with Clint Eastwood, etc. Once you see him, you, you'll know about him. You know, just like uh, uh, you would recognize his face. Yeah, just like Mickey Rooney. He's got a very distinct face. Yeah, just like Mickey Rooney. We, we you know say condolences yeah. to the family of, of losing a family member and Hollywood for losing an actual really good actor that everybody knows but nobody remembers. Um, 
and say in the other one where we still have a few more in time is it says Doctor Strange picks a side in the Captain Amer Captain America Civil War. I don't know if I knew they were going to, but I was really hoping he wouldn't pick a side. Yeah. Um, mainly because he really is my favorite strange character of Marvel. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, he's one of my favorites as well. Um, I don't know how they pull all that together as him picking a side, but, you know, it would be an interesting thing to throw in. You it, would, know? it would have to be for something. Like, say, um, if the, how the actual, I think, when does the new one? Civil War comes out soon, right? Is it this year? I think year? it's 2017. Cause, um, cause, but they, I know they have another one coming out in... Because um... I'm hoping... I'm hoping that if... Because I don't remember when it's released. Because if Doctor Strange comes first... 2016, so yeah, it's coming out this year. Um, let me see if okay. they actually have an actual So then it's date. probably going to be a summer blockbuster. Then I'm hoping it's for a reason... Tuesday, May 5th. Wow. I'm hoping it's a reason that, Next actually, month. that actually foreshadows the Doctor Strange. Like some sort of mystical bad guy that's moving behind the scenes. Because otherwise... I think it's stupid. I, I don't. I really don't see why you would introduce a character that, by the way, his movie is not even out yet. Yeah. Um, and the other cool thing in the hey, that's really neat. Michael Douglas is donating his entire film to collection to the New York Museum. Can I go through it first? <laughs> right. Well, I think that's pretty cool for an actor, and I'm pretty. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it's old school films, probably ones that there's not a lot of actual negatives around, type of thing. Yeah, the the Casablanca with the alternate ending, <laughs> or the or the the, the complete twelve hour version of Metropolis. Um, no. I, so I don't know. I think that's really neat for an actor to actually do that, donate some of his personal prize collection. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I mean, I, I honestly wouldn't want to part with my collection, but you know, uh, to educate people, I let them watch it. I'm my assumption would be, and it's been a while since I read the article. Honestly, that it would be, it wouldn't be just like, hey, I'm don donating my collection of Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, I, I would be assuming it was actual film collection of Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, you know, because there's a bunch of versions of it, Mister Pink, Mister Orange. Mr. White, um, you would actually buy all of them if you could? Maybe. I'm actually, I just want your copy, honestly. Um, but you know what I mean. I'm assuming it's like, like maybe the old film styles. It could be cellulo cellulo celluloid, which is extremely say explosive. Say five times fast. I can barely say it once. <laughs> um, and the other, why the hell would anybody want to do this? Sony's trying to resurrect everybody's favorite movie, Starman, which nobody remembers. <laughs> I've seen it. I don't it. even think I know of that one. I've Star seen it. Man? I've seen it, but I don't remember. I don't. I vaguely remember it. I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> it doesn't. Oh no! It it, it, it wow. doesn't jump out. It, in 1984. Yeah. You don't. No, remember? I don't know this one. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> um, and we're doing a lot of movie news just because. Well. Oh, Jeff, Charles Martin Smith there, too? Wow. <laughs> yeah. All hey, hey, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first that I know about a film that he doesn't. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I didn't even know it existed. So I dare you to watch it. No. I might take you on that after you watch Cat People. <laughs> as long as it's not Willard. Um, and the other one, it's like, okay, this is cool. Can they end the franchise? Charlie Theron is to star in Fast and Furious 8. Yeah, I heard about that, and it's like, you know, how, I don't want to watch those cars again. I liked the first couple Same of them. Same thing, you like Tokyo Drift, what? Uh, it did, was, you know, it was okay. Right? Huh? I, huh? I was honestly a bigger fan of Paul Walker than I was in anything else, and once he, he passed it. away. He just oh. had the ashtray. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. It's smoky in here. Um, so yeah, I, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of bummed that they're making more. Um, and so we, we, we do, we have announcement. Short film. Yes. We were asked to review a short film. Um, and this film it has not been viewed outside. Viewed of outside circle. of circle. Yeah. So and this is, and it's soon. It's going to go into. Uh, what do you the call the indie it? film? The indie films and, and festivals, and so we've been asked, and we're going to be reviewing it next week. We haven't decided if we're going to do just a special episode or within next week's episode. Yeah, we might do uh, a long episode of 
of it. So we're excited because this is the first time anybody's asked Real Flix Reviews to do that. And yeah. since obviously, obviously, if you've ever watched Real Flix Reviews, we've done a lot of short films. Yeah. A lot more than any that I'm aware of show like yeah. ours has done. And so I'm extremely honored that we were asked. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Uh, I don't know the gentleman's name. Do you know his name? Um, if you give me a second, I can. Okay. Um, but um, we're very grateful to him to reaching out to us and saying, hey, can you take a look, look at this and give me your opinion? Yeah. I'm, I think that's a very awesome thing. I was When, when he contacted us, I was, I was flabbergasted. I mean, I, I, there's not a lot of things that honestly get me that excited, but I was like, holy shit, this is really cool. Um, so I am, I, am, I am really honored, and I want to thank you from the bottom of – you know, our, our jaded movie reviewer hearts. She's jaded. I'm not. I'm a oh. nice person. What? <laughs> I'm giving my honest opinion. Do you want me to lie? Do you want me to candy coat this shit? <laughs> not really. You can't um, bottle me. <laughs> so it's, it's a gentleman. I actually don't know if he wants me to say his name or not, but it's a gentleman by the name of Paul Holbrook. He's the writer and director. Yeah. So we, we want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege to be able to be on the, on on board with something like this. Oh yeah, I might. Yeah. We encourage young directors or even seasoned directors to step out of your comfort zone, do something do something that is a uh, out there. Yeah, and if Put yourself out there is what I'm going to say. Yeah, and the, ben the the I guess the benefit about doing a short if you, even if you're like James said a traditional filmmaker, old school director or a student is this gives a short format to do something crazy. Yeah. Like we did a short film, I think it was called Skins. It's actually going to become a TV mm. show. Yeah. Um, so you never know where it goes. Or like Frank and Weenie was, uh, what was it? Was a short done by uh, Burton. Believe, yeah, Burton. It was a short done by Burton in film school, if I remember correctly, and it became a full length, full length feature film, like twenty years later. Yeah, it actually got a, a lot of publicity, and uh, I know a lot of people that have seen. It. I haven't seen Frank and Weenie though. I haven't. I mean, I've seen the, the the short film. Yeah. So you never know where this can go. So, as we've been said a couple of times, thank you. Yeah. And so if we do do a separate episode, we're going to call it like, you know, a real flicks review, special reviews or something like that. So it will be coming down the pike. So, so make sure you stay tuned to that. And next week is the, the second part of the gruesome twosomes pick. So batter up. So I'm going to go with the uh, matchstick men made in 2003. And uh, for the, the episode of television show that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be jumping back in time in the time machine Doo -doo. to 1997 Doo -doo. season six of the Simpsons. Episode 18, which is called A Star is Burns. Oh, I think I know what episode this might be. So, look forward to that. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as I go back real quick to the program I was on, I gave Enemy Mine a 3 out of 5. James gave it a 1.5 out of 5 because of the director. Ryan, hopefully... I booted you. <laughs> oh, Oh, you're fired. <laughs> um, literally. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Ryan gave it a, eh, since for some reason he decided to stay home. Uh, hopefully. Work, but stay at work. Hopefully sometime soon we'll actually know what he thinks about this movie. I mean, people are dying to meet him. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. You're grave robbing there. Um, so Full like, batting. <laughs> oh, shit. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching Real Flicks Reviews. And as always, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>